There is, the, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam actually had a specified time where he would teach women. Where he would do that. Especially the women of Medina. And actually the women of Medina were different from the women of Mecca. They were actually a lot more bold. And the Sahaba even noticed, they were, they were more bold. Like Umar radiallahu said, they're not like the women of Mecca. It's like, <laughs> so <laughs> there was a difference between them. And they're outspoken. And we even know that from like, you know, many athar and many hadith texts. Like, you know, Umar is giving khutbah radiallahu anhu and a woman gets up. And says, you can't say that. Allah said this. Like, lady, why are you not in the sister section behind a glass? <laughs> why are you... Oh, and you're talking to Umar. Umar. <laughs> you don't want to like point a finger at Umar like that. But she did. She's just like, gutsy lady, you know. She did that. And, you know, there are sometimes there are assumptions that men and women should not interact with each other at all under any circumstance. That's what Islam wants. That isn't true. As a matter of fact, non-mahram, man and woman, talking to each other in public, outside, is mentioned in the Qur'an. Musa alayhi salam went up to two girls that were not his mahram. Then he went over and talked to them and said, what's wrong with you ladies? Ma khatmukuma, what's wrong with you? And they said, well, we can't feed our animals until the whole flock is done. They had a conversation. He didn't go up to them and say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ya ukhtayya, my two sisters, fil Islam. He doesn't know even if they're no Muslims. They don't know. They don't know him, he doesn't know them. They don't know he's Musa alayhi salam. They don't know that. They don't know any of that. But they had a conversation with each other. A non-mahram talking to another non-mahram. About what? A problem. They're, they were wrestling with sheep. So you have to go talk to them. That's what are you doing? What's going on? Can I help with something? But he didn't talk, prolong the conversation. He kept it to the point. What are we learning in Quran? If you keep your conversation to the point, it's fine. You, will have, you might have a female co-worker. You might have a class. I have students. I have to answer their questions. They have a right to, to me as much as the brothers have a right to me. Because I'm teaching a class. It's a matter of justice. I can't put them in the back and not give them the, the same kind of attention. It's not fair. And I brought this up. If in education, is it fair or not? This is both. It, it's, it's acceptable. There are ulama that are more conservative on this, and there are ulama that allow it too. But there are plenty of mainstream ahl sunnah across the schools of thought scholars that allow this. That allow, for example, this kind of setting. If it's meant with certain kind of restrictions. You know, there shouldn't be small talk. If, in, if I crack a joke, it's to the entire audience, not to sisters by themselves, or something, because that's inappropriate. That's not right. Right? And you're supposed to have a, you know, a, a certain line, there's supposed to be a certain line of discomfort between you and myself. Or between you and any other non-mahram. There's supposed to be a line of discomfort. There's supposed to be a level of seriousness. You're not supposed to be giggly. When you come up individually and talk to a non-mahram man. You're not supposed to be like, No, I have a question brother. You said this. Why? <laughs> Learn to be like that. Learn to be like, learn not to be giggly around non-mahram men. Not smiley. Jazakallah khairan for so many things you are doing. No. Say that on your own, don't come up and say it to me. Don't come up and say it to me. Say that to your dad. Jazakallah khairan baba. You are so awesome. Great. When you come up to a non-mahram, if it's your teacher, if it's the imam of the masjid, if it's your employer, keep a serious tone. Keep a serious tone. You know, when a, a, a woman uses a serious tone, the man becomes serious automatically. Girl comes up to you, you think she's kind of pretty. She comes up to you and says, Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> You're not going to get your player on now. It's, it's done. It's over. But she comes up to you and says, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. No good. No good for you. Then you'll be like, oh, wa alaykum as You know, that's bad for you. So you, you know, you have to keep a, a, a stern voice. And these rules, I'm kind of alluding to them, so the Nur already covers them. These rules are already there. You have to keep a stern voice. You have to keep your eyes low. As, as low as you, it doesn't mean you don't look away like, brother, I have a question. Like, you, don't, you don't do that either. But you, you don't stare at the person. You're like, <laughs> yes, sister, do ask. No, not like that. Not like that. That's it's normal. It's not like over the top, but the idea is to keep yourself low. Don't don't stare. 
you know. Make just enough eye contact to get your point across and that's it. That, that's, that's all, you don't need more than that, you know. So this, these, these certain things, they are the guidelines by which public settings make it, make, make it okay. Now when